Hey guys, so as many of you know, I really like fast lenses, in particular fast primes. I was very excited when Curly reached out to me and said, would you be interested in reviewing our brand new lens that is an f1.2? Let's check out what's in the box. Here is the box. From the front, there's just a shadow of what is inside. You can see Curly. 1.2, 35 millimeter, just 35 on the side. On the back, the same thing, 35 on this side. Uh, let's see, focal length, here's some specs. So 35 millimeter aperture, 1.2 to 22. Recent focus distance is 0.3 meter, filter size, special features, click. Okay, so it's probably a click aperture. The mount is Sony E, made in China. Their info is listed there. So let's open this up. All right, microfiber cloth for cleaning with a little uh, barcode, curly. You have a user's manual. This is just a card with a three-year warranty card, that's what it is, that's cool. So this lens comes with a three-year warranty, certificate of approval, inspection, so that's cool. There's a lens number on here, so this is number 394 with a nice stamp. And this is just padding, which is pretty nice. Wow. I have never seen anything like this before. Wow. All right, so it's padding. Uh, there's silica gel down there and nothing else in the box. This lens is vacuum sealed. <laughs> uh, wow. It is very, very heavy. Um, probably one of the heaviest lenses that I've handled. So this should be very good. Feels very durable just initially. Let's see how we open this up. I think I could just rip this here. All right. Why, is, why doesn't Sony vacuum seal their lenses? That way you know it's brand new. So front lens element, check that out. That is huge. So around the front, 1.2, 35 millimeter, 72 millimeter filter thread. This is lens 394, which matches the certificate right there. That is pretty cool, actually. Uh, curly. And then you have this nice uh, brushed metal finish. I honestly think that this whole lens is made out of metal. This lens hood is definitely metal. Very nice quality, curly logo on the top, and inside has that felt padding. So very cool. Lens cap. This looks like a genuine Sony E-mount lens cap, which is weird. If that's a knockoff, that's really a pretty dang good knockoff. Look at the back lens element, huge and pretty deeply recessed in there. Toggle for the click. So if I toggle it down, so it's smooth but pretty tough as well. Um, you have to use some force to move this from f1.2 all the way to f22. And then if I turn the clicks back on, now you have a clicked aperture. So declicked and clicked all in one. I like the use of a different color here, so 1.235, um, and then the focusing ring is right here, so 0.3 of a meter, there's feet in red, so one foot, very, very smooth all the way to infinity. Rotation is about halfway, so 180 degrees from one end to the other and look at the aperture blades in there. So here's, uh, you can probably tell right there. So F22, all the way wide open, 1.2, 1.2 to F22. 
it looks like there are a lot of blades in there. It is very, very smooth. I mean, you look at that. Guys, I wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting this at all. Um, very unique lens, very high quality, and something that I haven't seen before um, from a manufacturer. I mean, this whole thing is metal, um, and it's pretty heavy. I'm gonna put it on the scale just for reference. All right, so just the lens itself weighs in at one pound, 10 ounces. So just six ounces shy of two pounds. Now to put that into perspective, the kit lens only weighs four ounces and even a larger lens such as the 28 from Sony comes in at 7.1 ounces. So this lens is very large and very heavy. When you mount it on the A6000, it looks huge. And altogether, this is two pounds, six ounces. After using this lens for the last couple of days, I can tell you this, the build quality is quite simply amazing. The aperture ring is nice and smooth, even with the clicks. Everything feels very premium when you are using this lens. Here are some sample images that I put together using this lens. So after taking those sample pictures, I was quite impressed with this lens. And I decided to go ahead and take a couple of test shots and zoom in and see just how sharp it really is, especially wide open. It was rainy outside, so we made the best of it. We have some umbrellas here. We have rain in the background. But it is still pretty interesting to take a look at how this lens performs at different apertures. Now what's really weird about this is that you'll see in the corner, this lens will pop up as an FE28 F2, which was the lens that I was using on my A6000 prior to swapping over to this lens. Uh, so I don't know why that is up there. You'll notice that at the end of the test, it just is blanked out. So pretty interesting. Anyway, so this is the lens this particular photo is taken at f1.2 um, and it's a manual only focus so i used focus peaking to try to get the eyes in focus and you could tell that i did a somewhat decent job however this lens does appear to be a bit soft at 1.2 at least in the center and really on the sides as well 
but none of that's in focus because that's all bokeh. 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, and then F2. So if you look at sharpness in the center, or at least on the subject at 1.2, pay closer attention to the hair because it's easier to see it there. It's uh, pretty soft here. 1.4, it's a little better, still soft. At 1.8, it looks significantly better than 1.2. And then F2, that's where you see that there is definitely sharpness there, and even the eyes are a little bit more sharp. So this lens really does sharpen up in the center at F2. Just another um, picture, this time also done at 1.2 versus 1.8. So at 1.2, if we look at the hair and the eyes, they are in focus. There's a little bit of color fringing here. You'll notice the purple bokeh. Uh, and then if we switch over to 1.8, things sharpen up quite a bit. So I think that this lens has a sweet spot of about 1.8 to f2. Just for fun, I thought, why don't I throw in the Sony 35 f1.8 into this test just to see if there is a noticeable difference in sharpness. So I took this picture here. So this is uh, done at f1.8 on this manual lens. And then I have the same image on the Sony 35 f1.8. So you might not notice much of a difference here going back and forth, but if we zoom in, here is the curly lens on the left and the Sony lens on the right. Significantly sharper here, even at 1.8, which you could blame on my manual focusing, but even with focus peaking, manual focusing isn't 100% all the time. And especially when you have a focal plane that is very, very paper thin, it's difficult to get precise focus just looking at a viewfinder or looking at a small camera screen. If you shoot this image at f1.2, it gets a little worse. Here is the curly lens at f1.2 and again the Sony lens at f1.8. I will say this, the lens definitely produces some nice bokeh. If you look at this image here, even at f1.8, if you look at the background, the bokeh balls are very nice and circular. There's an even greater difference when you are comparing f1.2 versus f1.8 on the Sony. Even on the face, you'll see how much more out of focus the face is at f1.2 versus f1.8. So what is the conclusion with this lens? Well, first of all, I have to say that the lenses that are coming out of China are getting better and better and better. And this is one of the best that I've tested. I wish it was sharper, wide open at f1.2. Unfortunately, it doesn't really sharpen up until about f1.8 or f2. It is a very, very fun lens to use because of that super narrow focus. So the things that I like about this lens, number one, the build quality. Number two, the smooth focus ring and the smooth aperture ring with a click and declicked mode. Number three, I like that there are 14 aperture blades in this lens, which makes bokeh super, super creamy. Number four is at nighttime, this lens really just shines because it lets in so much light. As for things that I don't like about this lens, well, it's big, it's heavy, not exactly the easiest thing to pack with you if you're traveling somewhere. Number two is wide open. I just wish it was a tidbit sharper. And lastly, number three is the price. It is pretty pricey. Now you are getting a very premium feeling lens, but for some casual users, it may be difficult to justify spending that amount of money on this lens because for the same money, you could go out and buy two prime lenses and they may be at f1.4 or f1.8 or f2, but at least they'll have autofocus, which will make things a little easier or they might have optical steady shot. So there are a lot of options out there when you are shopping around 
in this price range. However, for some professionals and some artists out there that are looking for the creamiest bokeh and something that's super, super fast, this lens produces some of the creamiest bokeh that I've ever seen come from a lens. So that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the likes and all the comments. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.